In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. This is question four. The question reads, an independent local boutique has $8,000 available each month for advertising. Newspaper ads cost $400 each and no more than 30 can run per month. Internet banner ads cost $20 each and no more than 60 can run per month. TV ads cost $2,000 each with a maximum of 10 available each month. Approximately 4,000 women will see each newspaper ad, 3,000 will see each internet banner, and 10,000 will see each TV ad. What we're expected to find is how much of each type of advertising should be used if the store wants to maximize its ad exposure. The first thing that we want to do is create the objective function, the function that we will use to maximize the ad exposure. And for that, we'll use this last sentence where we're told the following information. So what we'll do is write down Z for the maximum exposure is equal to 4,000 and I'll represent X sub one as the number of newspaper ads. So 4,000 times X sub one plus I'll represent X sub two as the number of internet ads. So I'll write down 3,000 X sub two and for the number of TV ads, we'll use X sub three so I'll write down plus 10,000 X sub three. That is our objective function. We also need to write down the constraints. And for that, we will reread part of this question. We're told that the newspaper ads cost $400 each and no more than 30 can run per month. So 30 is the maximum number of newspaper ads. In addition, no more than 60 internet ads can run per month. And for the television ads, 10 is the maximum. The last constraint comes here, where you have $8,000 available, you can't surpass that. So 8,000 is the maximum. And newspaper ads cost 400 each, plus $20 each for the internet ads, plus 2,000 for the television ads. Take a look at this, we have four constraints, and the objective function. The next thing that I want to do is convert these constraints into equations and you can do that by introducing slack variables. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. Take for example this constraint. To make this constraint into an equation I'll add a slack variable to the right side. So I'll write down plus s1 and by doing that you convert this into the following 400 x sub 1 plus 20 x sub 2 plus 2000 x sub 3 plus our slack variable which I'll represent as s sub 1 is equal to 8000. Now if you'd like a discussion on why we introduce slack variables, a more extensive discussion, make sure that you re-watch question 1 in this series where we go through the theory. So to make this constraint into an equation, I'll introduce another slack variable here. Now it doesn't matter whether you put these numbers on the left or on the right, I prefer to put my constant at the end of the equation. And I'll do the same thing here. So I'll write down x sub 1 plus s sub 2 is equal to 30. And you want to introduce a slack variable per each constraint. To make this into an equation, I'll write down x sub 2 plus another slack variable is equal to 60. And here, x sub 3 plus slack variable 4 is equal to 10. Notice that I did not introduce a slack variable for the objective function because it's already an equation. You don't need to do that. Once you have these four equations and your objective function, you have to convert these numbers into an augmented matrix, which will serve as your initial simplex tableau. And here's how you do that. Starting with the first equation, I'll write down the leading coefficients for each of the variables. So 400, 20, 2000, and you want to be as organized as you can because it does get messy if you have multiple slack variables. In fact, this is the reason why I gave this question a difficulty rating of hard. It's because we have four slack variables, whereas in the previous example, we only had to use two. The leading coefficient here is one, there's no S sub 2, there's no S sub 3, nor is there an S sub 4, or even a Z here. So I'll write down 0, and our constant is 8,000. Let's convert this. That becomes a 1. 
there's no x sub 2, no x sub 3, but there is an s sub 2. So I'll leave this as 0, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, and 30. This equation becomes 0, 1, that's the x sub 2 column. And just to make things clear, I'll write this down as x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, s sub 1 through s sub 4, z, and our constant. So here, we had a 1 in front of the x sub 2. That's why I placed a 1 there. There's no x sub 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 60. For this equation, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. We do have an s sub 4, so it's a 1, no z, and a 10. Finally, for this equation, our objective function, what you want to do is bring the terms, these three, over to the side of the z. So pretend you're moving this term over, that term over, and this last term over to the left side. It makes them all negative. And with that being said, you'll write down negative 4,000 for x sub 1, negative 3,000 for x sub 2, and negative 10,000 for x sub 3. There were no slack variables, so we have straight zeros, but we did have the z, which has a coefficient of 1, and we'll write down 1, but no constant. Now to differentiate between the objective function and the constraints, which have been turned into equations, I'll separate this with lines. Like I said, you want to be as neat as possible because this process gets really messy. In fact, when I did this by hand, it took me five pages to complete. So there's a lot of work involved. At this point, you want to analyze the numbers that are at the bottom here, your objective function. And you want to pick out the one that's most negative. The most negative one is negative 10,000. And that's called your negative indicator. Your negative indicator will help you find your pivot number. And here's how. You take your constant and you divide it by each number in that row. So 8,000 divided by 2,000, you can display that here. That's equal to 4. And we'll call this column our quotient column. 30 divided by 0, that doesn't work, so you'll just reject that. 60 divided by 0, also reject. And 10 divided by 1 is 10. Of these two numbers, you want to pick out the smaller. The smaller is this 4, and what this tells us is that this 2,000 will be our pivot number. In other words, we'll be using all of row 1 to make this number and that number into zeros, using, of course, matrix row operations. So just to be clear, that's row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, and row 5. This means that we have to multiply all of row 4 by 2,000 and then subtract row 1 minus row 4, which will become our new row 4. In addition, once you're done that, you'll multiply all of this by 5 and then add row 1 and row 5 together, where that will become your new row 5. In case you're confused, I've written down what I'm doing on the screen. So starting with row 1 and row 5, it doesn't matter whether you start here or start here. I'm going to start with this. So I'm multiplying row 1 by 5 and then adding row 1 and row 5 together, which will give me my new row 5. If you do this correctly, your new row 5 should look like this. There you have it. I've written it in purple. To make this row 4 into a 0, specifically that 1, I'll multiply all of row 4 by 2,000 and then take R1 minus R4 and that will serve as my new R4. Just to give you an idea, if I multiply this by 2,000, namely this number, we have 2,000 minus 2,000, that becomes a zero. And if you do this correctly, your new row four should look like this. Notice the transformation. Everything below this number is a zero, and that's exactly what we wanted to accomplish. At this point, you want to reanalyze the numbers in your objective function, and you want to find out which one is the most negative. The most negative number now is negative 2,900. So this will serve as your pivot column. And to find your pivot number, we will redo the following calculations to find new quotients. Starting with 8,000, 8,000 divided by 20 is equal to 400. 
30 divided by 0, once again reject. 60 divided by 1 is 60. Negative 12,000 divided by 20 is a negative number, so we reject that as well. And of these two numbers, we will pick 60 because it's the smaller of the two. Therefore, this is our new pivot. Now that we found our new pivot, we have to make this 20 and this 20 into zeros using matrix row operations once again. And of course, don't forget about negative 2900. So I'll start with row one. To make this 20 into a zero, I'll multiply all of row three by 20, and then my new row one will be row one minus row three. For example, if I multiply this by 20, I end up with zero. 400 minus zero is 400. That remains as 400. Multiplying this by 20, I end up with 20. This 20 minus that 20 is equal to zero. So that becomes a zero and so on. If you do this correctly, your new row one should look like this. Next, we have to take care of this 20. To make this 20 into a zero, I'll multiply all of row three by 20 and then subtract row three minus row four. And that will serve as my brand new row four. In case you're confused by that, Let's multiply this by 20. 0 times 20 is 0. 0 minus negative 400. This makes this negative 400. Similarly, multiplying that by 20 gives me 20. 20 minus 20 is equal to 0. That makes that into a 0. So my brand new row 4 should look like this. Lastly, we need to use this pivot to make negative 2900 also a 0. To do that, I'll multiply all of row 3 by 2,900, and my new row 5 will be row 3 and row 5 combined. Think about it. If I multiply this by positive 2,900, and then I combine R3 and R5, in other words, add them, this becomes a 0. And of course, you would have to do the same thing for all the other numbers. If you do this correctly, your brand new row 5 should look like this. At this point, we have accomplished what we wanted. Notice that we have zeros here and zeros here. Unfortunately, if you look at row five, we still have a negative number, negative 2000. This means we're not done yet. Because this is our negative indicator, this is our pivot column, and we find the quotients once again. So 6800 divided by 400 gives us 17. 30 divided by one is 30. 60 divided by zero, reject that. 13,200 divided by a negative number, also reject that. So of these two numbers, 17 is the smallest one, that makes 400 my pivot. Of course, just like last time using your pivot, we need to make every number underneath or above, in our case we don't have any numbers above, into zeros. So this needs to become a zero, that needs to become a zero, and so does that. Let's start by making R2, specifically this one, into a zero. We can do that by multiplying all of row 2 by 400, then taking R1 minus R2. If you do that correctly, you should end up with a brand new R2 that looks like this. Again, we have R1 and R4, so I'll simply add R1 and R4 together. That will make that into a zero. In other words, 400 plus negative 400 is equal to zero. Zero plus zero is equal to zero. 2,000 plus zero is equal to 2,000. So those numbers would be displayed here. Therefore, our brand new R4 should look like this. Our last number is this negative 2,000, which we need to make into a zero. To take care of that, I'll multiply all of row four by five, and then taking R1 plus R5, and that will become our new R5. So multiplying this by five, we end up with 2,000, 2,000 plus negative 2,000 is equal to zero. So our brand new R5 should look like this. If you reach this point, you should have a smile on your face because if you look at R5, there are no more negative numbers. And because there are no more negative numbers, we can start to find the solution, the end result. Notice that in this column, we have one number and the rest are zeros. So this is going to be one of our solutions. This is also going to be one of our solutions. Here and here also fits that model. So starting with this column, we have the x sub 1 column. We'll rewrite this as 400 x sub 1 is equal to 6,800. We'll solve that in a moment. Here, we can represent this as x sub 2 and the coefficient is a 1, is equal to 60. This column represents as sub 4. 
and we have 2,000, S sub 4 is equal to 20,000. And finally, this column represents Z, our optimal solution, Z is equal to 248,000. So solving for X1 here, we end up with 17. Solving for X2, we don't need to, it's already 60. S sub 4, our slack variable is 10. I'll just highlight these and interpret them in a moment. And Z is equal to 248,000. This tells us that the maximum exposure is 248,000 women when 17 newspaper ads are running, 60 internet banner ads are running, and no TV ads are running. Part B of this question asks, a marketing analyst is puzzled by the results of part A. More women see each TV ad than each newspaper ad or internet ad, he reasons. So it makes no sense to use newspaper ads and internet ads and no TV ads. How would you respond? Now, if you've made it this far in this video, what I would like you to do is comment below as to what you think would be an appropriate response to this analyst. And there you have it. That is how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. Make sure to watch question five for yet another example.